Hi there. It's your favorite internet grandpa here. Today we're reading chapter 7 of the Boxcar Children book titled Surprise Island. This chapter is called Exploring. So let's begin. The next morning, the rain had stopped and it was a beautiful day. First, the four children went swimming. Then, after breakfast, they started out with a big kettle to explore again. Let's go down to the very end of the island today, said Henry. I'll make a picture of the island as we go along, said Violet, taking the blue book. They walked along slowly till they could see the very end of the island. Look, oh look, cried Jessie. What a big pile of shells. It's taller than Benny, cried Henry, as he and the others ran to the shell pile. They're all broke, said Benny, picking up some shells. Broken, Benny, said Henry. Well, broken then, said Benny. Old broken clam shells. No pretty ones for our museum. Yes, but look, said Jessie. They are all clam shells, just as if somebody sat here for years and years getting out clams. Maybe they did, said Violet. Who did, asked Benny. I don't know, Benny, replied Henry. I know I never saw anything like it before, not even in a picture. He took a stick and dug into the pile. Violet made a little picture in her book of the shell pile. Then the children started to explore the other side of the island. They found that this side of the island was very rocky. Jessie, Henry, and Violet were looking up at the high rocks when Jenny, Benny said suddenly, Look, a little cave. Let's go in. He's right, said ben, Henry, looking in. Come on, like this, said Benny, going in on his hands and knees. The other children went after Benny, laughing. Oh, it's just a little room, cried Jessie, and I can see another one. Nice in here, said Henry, looking around him. Let's go on. They all crawled after Henry and came in to another came to another little room. They could still see the ocean as they looked back. The children sat down and Henry began to dig with the stick just for fun. Suddenly he dug out a small stone. Oops, cried Henry, what is this? He picked up the stone and rubbed off the wet sand. Then he jumped up. It's an Indian arrowhead, he cried. What do you know? Let me see, said Jessie. It certainly is an arrowhead. See the little place at the end where they tied it to a stick? They put feathers on the other end, said Henry. It's for the museum, cried Benny. So it is, said Henry. You think of everything, Benny. Let's dig and see if we can find another one. If Indians lived here, they had more than one arrow. The children began to dig. When Watch saw what they were doing, he began to dig too. If we find a lot of Indian things, cried Henry, maybe some real museum will buy them. That's a good idea. Let's come here early some morning and dig, said Jessie. Besides, it's a lot of fun. Suddenly, Watch stopped digging and began to bark. What's the matter, old boy? What are you trying to tell us, asked Henry. He went over and put his hand in the hole Watch had dug and took out a big, smooth stone. I think this is an old axe head, he cried, turning it over. The other children came to look, and Benny took it in his hand. Watch barked again sharply. Then he threw back his head and gave one long howl. Something is wrong, cried Henry. Watch never howls. Oh, look, Henry, cried Jesse in a frightened voice. They looked at the door and water was coming in almost at their feet. Let's get out of here, shouted Henry, starting for the door. Come as fast as you can. They crawled as fast as they could, but the water was quite, quite deep. Watch began to swim. Joe doesn't know where we are, cried Benny, where he could save us. I'm scared. Don't talk, Benny. Keep going. Soon they were in the first room. A wave is coming, Henry shouted. When it comes, get out fast. The wave came and broke over them. Jesse caught Benny's arm and pulled him out. 
The four frightened children crawled through the water and scrambled along the rocky edge before another wave came in. They rested there a short time and then crawled to the shell pile. Be careful, said Henry. Don't fall. Oh, thank goodness, cried Jessie as they came to the dry sand. I'm all tired, said Benny crossly, and I'm scared of that old cave. Well, said Henry, I'm the one who ought to have watched the tide. That cave is perfectly safe when the tide is out. Just think how lucky we are to be out. We did get out, said Violet. Thank goodness old watch for it. Thank good old watch for it. She was still so frightened that she shook all over. Right, said Henry. Let's rest a little while. Then we'll go back and see the way we came. When the family came walking slowly back to their barn, Joe saw that something was wrong. He waved to them from the hut. All right, he called. No, shouted Benny. We're scared and almost dead. The water came in the cave almost all over us. What do you mean, asked Joe. He was very excited. We crawled into a cave and the tide came up and almost caught us, Joe, said Henry. I should have looked for the tide. If Watch hadn't barked, we wouldn't have seen the waves coming in. I can see that you're all worn out, said Joe. You're too tired to get dinner. Captain Daniel has just made a big kettle of stew. Why don't you each bring a bowl down here and eat with us? Jessie looked at Joe and smiled. We will, she said. We'll each get a bowl and a spoon and we'll be right back. When the children sat down on the sand by the little hut, they began to feel better. The hot stew was good. Benny looked sleepy. Where was this cave? asked Joe. On the very end of the island, said Jessie. We found some Indian things in it. What did you find? asked Joe quickly. Henry took the arrowhead out of his pocket and gave it to him. We found something else too, but we forgot to bring it. No, I brought it, said Benny, almost asleep. It's in my pocket, and I can't get it out. Joe put his hand in Benny's pocket and pulled out the stone. It's an Indian axe head, said Joe at once. I thought it was, said Henry, but you seem to be sure. Well, I guess I am sure, said Joe, turning it over. Maybe there are other things in the cave. I'm scared to go in that old cave again, said Benny crossly. Oh, don't say that, cried Joe. Just watch the tide. There must be some good Indian digging in there. If you ever want company, I could go with you. Oh, would you, said Henry? Then we certainly would be all right. There was a big pile of shells near the cave, too. What? A shell pile? shouted Joe. Then I will certainly go with you. I must. Why? asked Benny. Why must you? But it was the last words he spoke. He was fast asleep. Joe was saved from answering Benny. He just smiled and said, I'll carry him home for you. It will be the best thing for all of you to get some sleep. Joe picked up Benny and took him to his bed. Jesse, Violet, and Henry followed them into the barn. In a few minutes, the other three children fell asleep right in the middle of the day. And that's the end of chapter 7. We'll read chapter 8 next time. Till then, ta-ta. Love you guys. Bye.